The podcast you're about to hear involves true stories, which may contain graphic content that is not suitable for children. Listener's discretion is advised. This is Esoteric Oddities. Hello. Hi, guys. I think I feel like I literally say hi, guys, yeah. every when time. I, when I listen back, it's like, hi, guys. <laughs> every hi guys. time. Guys. Hi, guys. 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 Hi, people. People of the east, west, north. Everywhere. South. Um, so I have a question. I have a quest. Maybe it. it's just because I'm a millennial, but why do people think it's okay to take business calls while they're taking a shit? Who does that? I'm sorry. Nobody wants to hear the revenge of last night's chimichanga while you're on the toilet, Who Cheryl. does that? Um, you can hear that. Yeah. It, oh, I know. It, um, what is it? Vibrates off the toilet. Reverberation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just a thought. Am I crazy? It, should I be doing it? Should I be taking are calls? Are you doing it? No, but uh-huh. I feel like I should be because apparently a couple people are doing it. Who does that? I need you to tell me. I do it. <laughs> You're a liar. Um, but I just really wanted to talk about a couple episodes ago, not the last one, the one before, on episode 19, we discussed the Truman Show. I was wanting to, oh, I wish we would have watched it before we talked about this. You didn't watch it, I'm assuming, from when we recorded last till now, the Truman Show, Jim Carrey. We talked about it. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Where, so the Truman Show, Jim Carrey is like a oh, guy. Yeah. And his life is being filmed. And when I was little, I thought that my mom was a skeleton. Yes, and you thought people were like yeah. peering in on your life. Okay. So I did a little research. Are we surprised? No. So the Your whole life is research. True. <laughs> These hoes we do research. Uh, so there was an article titled The Truman Show Delusion, Psychosis in the Global Village uh, by Joel Gold and Ian Gold. Are they brothers? Don't know. Are they lovers? Could be. But they I have the same the last name. One. It would have been better if it was like Joel Silver and Ian Gold, because then they'd be silver and gold. Like Sarah Tall and Sarah Long. Oh yeah, no, Sarah Tall and Sarah Short. Sarah, yeah. If you guys don't know from Goosebumps, <laughs> the um, haunted, haunted mask. mask. Why do <laughs> we know this? Because we've our seen it. Favorite so, episode oh my God. of Goosebumps. We've seen it so many. We watch Carly it Bath. all the time. Carly Breath. Carly Breath. You you're just so you're just so scary. Yeah, you you're just so scary. <laughs> I am not. That's not fair. All right, but we're not here for that. Yes, we are. Well, we are, but we're we're here to talk about the Truman Show delusion. Okay, so there's this whole article, and it talked about that there actually is like a Truman Show delusion. Um, What's your delusion? Uh, so in this article, they state that there is a novel delusion in which the patient believes that he is being filmed and that. Uh, and that the films are being broadcast for the entertainment of others. We describe a series of patients who present a delu- who are presented with a delusional uh, system according to which they are the subjects of something akin to a reality show that is being broadcast that is broadcasting their daily lives for the entertainment of others. Also, I realize how vain that sounds. I'm like my existence is for everyone's entertainment. <laughs> like that's literally how I feel. I mean, isn't that how the internet works? It's true. When I <laughs> when you vlog, like that pretty much is. Yeah. Yeah. You like have to have like an entertaining life to reel people in. Also, it's also like also it's also I hate myself. Um, there's like a lot of the um, whole like facade thing with the internet. So. Oh, for sure. Facade, facade. So maybe the, um Truman, the Truman Show, experienced that as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's a real disorder. And there were f- five cases, I think. Five. Okay, so let me just read a couple of these cases because these are real life situations that I I thought I was the only one. So uh, Mr. A, this is case number one. He's called Mr. referred to as Mr. A. So Mr. A claims that his life was like the Truman Show. He believed uh, he believed this for five years without letting his family know. So he's like, I'm on to you, bitches. That's so scary. Uh, and he believed that the 9-11 attacks were fabricated, and he planned to travel to New York to 9/11 see if 9-11 was an inside job. To- <laughs> he planned uh, to go to New York to see if the Twin Towers were still standing, and if they were, in his mind, this would prove that he was the star of his own show. So if they if they still if they existed. Yeah, he thought that it was like fake. Oh, fake, fake news. news. <laughs> um. And he believed that everyone in his life was a part of the conspiracy and that cameras were implanted in his eyes, like in that Black Mirror episode. Yo. And um, 
when he was admitted to a uh, psychiatric center, he asked to speak to the director. Like Where's not, the director? Yeah, the director of my life. He was diagnosed with having schizophrenia. Here's another thought. What if they diagnosed him with having schizophrenia because he was actually on he to something? He was actually on to something. And I'm they were saying, like, we, need to, we can't. This man knows too much. He, yeah, so let's label him as schizophrenic. He's That's what on they, to us. I'm, I'm saying. Um, so then case number two, Mr. B. Uh, he believed that he was being continuously recorded and nationally broadcasted. He came up with a plan to go to New York City like Again, the other man. See? Mm. This is a different man with, you know, this is a different plan. They didn't know each other. He was going to meet up with an unknown woman at the top of the, the Statue of Liberty. And then he was somehow going to, she was going to release him from control. I don't know. I didn't feel like reading the whole article because I was kind of bored. But <laughs> like you are yawning clearly. Um, <laughs> I always yawn. I know y'all hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought everyone in his life was, they were all actors who had a script and it was a charade around his entire life. He was later diagnosed with schizoaffective, uh, schizoaffective disorder, a uh, schizoaffective disorder, okay. which is a bo- bipolar type. I can't talk today. Hello. So what's up with New York? That's what I'm saying. Number one. Number two. Are these people actually telling the truth Mm -hmm. and they're just getting diagnosed with a mental illness to shut them up? So this one's kind of crazy. So this is case number three, Mr. C. He was a journalist and he believed that the stories in newspapers online and on television that he was working with were all created by his colleagues in the media for his personal amusement. So he thought all the news that he was finding out about and reporting on was fake and that everybody was in on the fact that it was fake, fake news. Uh, He believed Everyone around him was a paid actor. He thought everything was fake. He thought all of his associates were uh, involved. So, that, yeah, that's interesting. Because he was, he, well, he was a journalist. Like, he was reporting news and he was like, oh, shit. Wait, are you ready for this one? I'm this ready. is case number four. This is the last one I wrote because the fifth one probably wasn't that interesting. Case number four was Mr. D. Mr. Deeds? Mr. D. Oh. Uh, he actually worked on a reality television show. See, I'm shook. And he came to believe that he was actually the person whose life was being broadcast. He thought it was a secret. Uh, he thought he was a secret contestant on a reality show and believed that he was constantly being filmed. He also believed all of his thoughts were being controlled by a film crew paid for by his family. He was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, or he knew the truth. Right. No. See, this is so tricky. It's crazy to think about. My mind is blown and now I can't stop thinking about it. And then I'm stuck. in 2007, there was a man named William Johns III. Um, he was actually a psychiatrist who attempted to steal a child from somebody. A news report on the incident claims that a friend of the psychiatrist reportedly told a judge that John said he had to go to New York to get out of the Truman Show. See, what's up with New York? I'm going to say this every time. Can you tell me? I don't know. I wish I knew. But also on a less interesting note, on that same episode, I think I talked about how Garth Brooks wasn't on Spotify, but he is indeed on Spotify. But so he you only, lied. No. Well, he only has a handful of songs on there. He literally has like four or five songs that are on there. Why? He, he tried to start this thing. It was called uh, Ghost Tunes or Ghost Town Tunes or something. Oh, and it was... And he tried... Because he didn't want to be on... Spotify or He's iTunes. not... Yeah, he's not even on iTunes. He thought that... Ooh, we got a little Taylor Swift here. He, yeah. Well, this was a little before Taylor Swift. I'm saying. Yeah. And he <laughs> thought that the art was in the album and to go buy the fucking album. I love that. The art is in the album. Uh, and No Fence is, is deaf, his best album. Not sponsored. I don't even like country music. But here he is. But <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So, hello. This is Esoteric Oddities. I'm Podcast. Sarah. I'm Jonathan. And this week's topic was supposed to be parasites. Yes. But I texted Sarah the first day we were doing it. I was like, you. We got to change I it. Got, we got Because, I mean, it's one thing to talk about gross crazy weird shit but okay, i couldn't but coming out of eyeballs it. and yeah, things no. like that so when you told me um i do everything on my company laptop because it's i always have it 
Um, so I literally, every topic we've ever researched, I've researched on this laptop. So I hope they're not logging in. They my probably log. are. Yeah, they probably think I'm crazy. I'm either trying to kill someone, I've killed people, or um, I'm plotting like a world demise. Anyway. Because keep in mind, this is episode like 20 or 21. Yeah, so, so that's I've all been of been at it for a while. I mean, I did switch computers, so oh, well, we have that. Oh, um, well, But I literally looked up parasites and it was things coming out of eyeballs yikes eyeballs i can't i can't even wear contacts and you want me to watch something come out of an eyeball well yeah because i didn't want to put you guys through that because yeah i don't i know i'm one for i like i like squeamish shit but nah i don't think i would listen i i wouldn't even listen to our podcast episode that's like real 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 like real life like that happens oh you want to talk about real life my mom's friend see her husband Okay, he got really, really sick, right? Like severely ill out of nowhere. Um, so he went to the doctors and they found a parasite living in him that Where? was literally the fourth, like one fourth the size of my thumb. It was so big and it had like legs and it was crawling. You want to know why? It was in his stomach because he ate um, wild boar. He ate wild boar that wasn't cooked all the way through. You know, the, the pig with the tusks and stuff. I know what a boar is. Oh, okay. Well. He ate one of those and... Uh, this is why we don't eat meat. Mm. So instead of uh, talking about things that aren't cooked properly, today's topic <laughs> is about things that are cooked properly. But yes, we're talking about cannibals. Humans. All right. Um, tis the season. It's the holiday season. So I don't know about you, but I wrote about one caring cannibal. She was charitable and a terrible woman. You'll find out what that means shortly. Roll it. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? Are we doing it? We're ready. We're doing it. Oh my God. My palms are sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. Yes. Um, we actually did have Jason's mom's spaghetti tonight. It was very good. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Jason's mom. Mrs. What is it? <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Okay. okay. <laughs> so uh, this is Leonardo Cianciulli. Leonardo was born in 1893 in Montella, Italy. And she was set up for a life of darkness, and she was not a loved child. So her mom, Amelia, did not show any affection because Leonardo was conceived from rape. And back in the 1800s, reporting rape was very different than it is now, and Amelia was pretty much forced to marry her rapist, Mariano Cianciulli. What? Mm -hmm. That is so sad. Well, she got pregnant, so I I don't think she was forced to, but I think she she had no option because if she got pregnant, pregnant do you know what i mean right okay um that's just and this was in italy so it wasn't here um so the woman and her rapist settled in a poverty-stricken town and raised leonarda in a home that knew not love nor compassion leonarda fell into a deep state of depression at a very young age and attempted suicide twice as a child this is so sad i know by 1917, Leonardo was in her early 20s, and she married Raphael Pensardi, who was a registry office clerk in her town. However, her miserable parents were not happy at all about this. Because, of course they weren't. Right? Why would they be happy about anything? Well, yeah, right. Um, because they had allegedly already arranged plans with a man who she was set to marry. Uh, after they wed, Amelia told her that neither Leonardo nor her husband were welcome in their lives anymore. And it was at this point when Leonardo, who was very superstitious, we will come to find, uh, she became convinced that her mother placed a curse on her and her new husband. So Raphael helped Leonardo move to his hometown of Larian- Lariano in uh, Alta Erpinia. Yes, you got it. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, her bad antics began, and Leonardo was charged with fraud and sent to prison for a short time in her new town. So when she was released in 1927, the couple was too ashamed to show their faces in town, and they moved to uh, Lacedonia, and the bad luck followed. So in 1930, their home was destroyed by a 6.6 earthquake, which took the lives of 1,404 people in their village. 2,400 square miles were affected by this, which made the death count particularly low, but still incredibly unfortunate. And seven out of 10 houses were completely destroyed, uh, which was, you know, an outcome made worse by the poor strength of many of the buildings. Uh, This included Leonardo and her husband. So uh, they lost everything and they moved to... Coratio. Once there, Leonardo opened up her own business as a local fortune teller, which she was working as fraud because she wasn't a real fortune teller. 
and she was a Always. self she was a self appointed matchmaker for the women in her town. What? I know. How are Girl, you gonna be? How right. are you gonna be a matchmaker in a town you don't know anybody? In? And a fraud. You fraud ass. I bitch. mean, I guess that makes sense because she's a fraud, so she just lies to people. Yeah. But you can't matchmake if you don't know anyone. And on her downtime, she made soaps and tea cakes, which is nice. Lovely old lady. Uh, only after a short amount of time, she began known to her neighbors as being kind and a devoted woman who would give oh. the clothes off her back if anybody needed anything. What you need, child? You need a shirt? You need a brassiere? I'm a double D. Come here, baby. Well, she, um, <clears throat> she really gave to that community. Sure did. For a short time, Leonardo believed that the curse was lifted, but reality came crashing down. So Leonardo became pregnant 17 times. Three of her pregnancies were unfortunate miscarriages, and 10 of her children died of a young age due to the unfortunate diseases that circulated at the time. What? Mm -hmm. So this no. made her extremely overprotective of the four children that were survived, especially her son named Giuseppe, who was her favorite. So for a woman who was never shown love as a child, it would be her own love for her own child that would change her life and end the lives of many are you ready for this i'm not because i feel like how does everyone i'm not because how does she turn into this caring woman into i'm gonna assume she's the cannibal well, you know what they say about assuming don't assume you make an ass out of yourself no you make an ass out of you oh and me oh okay <laughs> <laughs> Um, Leonardo visited a fellow fortune teller, one that she believed was not a fraud. And the woman told her that she would have many children, but would lose every single one of them before she herself died. And this terrifying notion turned into a great possibility a short time later. In 1939, men in Italy were being drafted to prepare for World War II. One of the many who were drafted was her beloved son, Giuseppe. So, being extremely superstitious, Leonardo conjured up a plot to save the soul of her son by sacrificing that of another to take the place of Giuseppe in the afterlife. Now, we all know. Do we? Anybody that, I feel like anybody who likes things like this knows that you cannot bring anyone back from the dead. Ever. Oh, she knows. Y your homegirl knows. Yeah, she knows that sacrificing someone else's life is going to... She thinks that fate wants a soul. So she's going to have a ritual and sacrifice somebody's life. And that soul is going to take the place of Giuseppe's soul. So then he would be saved. <clears throat> from dying. Yes. Okay. Got it. Or at least from being drafted into the war. Okay. Uh, so after creating her plan, she went to a different fortune teller to see if she could change the fate with the exchange of another's soul. The woman read Leonardo's palms and told her, in your right hand, I see prison. In your left, I see a criminal asylum. Talk about foreshadowing. <laughs> Am I right, I ladies and gentlemen? need to go to gentlemen. a fortune teller like that. Why? Because I want my fortune told. Oh, I went to a fortune teller once. I, like, need guidance. Um, don't we all? True. So, a few weeks later... A woman named uh, Faustina Setti entered Leonardo's fortune teller shop, looking for some sense of direction in life. The woman was unmarried and unhappy with her current love life, and Leonardo told Faustina of a man who she could marry in the Italian providence of Pola. So Leonardo told her if she wanted her destiny of love and happiness to be fulfilled, that she must not tell anybody of her plan and travel and marry. Instead, Leonardo instructed Faustina to write out postcards to all of her friends and family, tell them everything was going great in life, and then pack up everything, return to Leonardo, and then leave for Pola. And Faustina did just that. After packing up, she returned to the fraudulent fortune teller where Leonardo poured her a glass of celebratory wine. Don't drink it! They raised their glasses mm -hmm. and downed the wine. But it's too bad Faustina did not taste the drugs Leonardo had added. We all saw that coming. It only took a few minutes for Faustina to fall unconscious. Then Leonardo took an axe. And with a few whacks to Faustina's skull, she was dead. 
the petite woman then took the body into a closet for storage, which she later chopped up into nine pieces. The blood was drained into a basin, and Leonardo then used caustic soda, which is extremely corrosive. It's, uh, it's very effective at digesting grease and fat and is used to easily turn hardwood into pulp for paper. If that tells you anything. Um, so she later stated in her official memoir, quote, also, let's take a shot every time I say, quote, go back and listen to the last episode. You'll be super drunk by five minutes. And <laughs> I love, I love my quotes. Oh my uh, God. Same. I love quotes. Uh, quote, I threw the pieces into a pot, added seven kilos of caustic soda, which I had bought to make soap, then stirred the whole mixture until the pieces dissolved into a thick, dark mush which I poured into several large containers and emptied in a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I left it until it coagulated, dried it in the oven, ground it up, mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk, and eggs. Kneading all the ingredients together, I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit. Though Giuseppe and I consumed them as well. Do you think the son knew? Absolutely. And he's still... Sure. Oh. A tea cake's a tea cake, baby girl. If I saw a macaroon there and it was looking scrumptious... It's a macaron. Macaron. So the macarons are the coconut ones and the macaroons are the other ones. Wait, strike that. Reverse it, right? Yep. So macaron. (laughs) (laughs) John, edit that out. Future John, edit that out. Wow, that's funny. It's hilarious. I'm dying. CTFU. Crack the fuck up. <laughs> Sarah called me out today for saying CTFU too many times. No, I literally didn't even have to read my text. I like the um the sound went off and I was like literally my mind said crack the fuck up and I looked down and it says crack the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my go to and you know my face was just like hmm. I sent you that picture. That picture of me was rough. I know. Um okay, so back to this crazy bitch. Uh, The following year, in 1940, a woman named uh, Francesca Suave mentioned to Leonardo that she was in search for a job. Now, it's unclear if this girl came uh, came to Leonardo like as a fortune teller or if they were friends. It's hard to decipher. So, uh, as the kind friend that she was, Leonardo told her to travel to Piencia. Piencia? Piencia. Yes. Yes, baby. To some other place in Italy. <laughs> what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> I think we're making a podcast. Or are we just talking into a microphone? And talk- I, I think we're just talking into a microphone. Did I even press record? Literally checked. We're good. I did. Okay. <laughs> so as we're the on con- some shit. Literally. Uh, as the kind friend that she was, Leonardo told her to travel... Disclaimer, we are not drunk or high. Yes, thank you. Just a little disclaimer. Just live in life. (laughs) (laughs) Um, As the kind friend that she was, Leonardo told her to travel to another place in Italy, assuring her that there was a teaching job available for her there. Like before, she told Francesca not to tell anyone where she was going, but she did tell her to send out postcards to her friends and family and tell them it's good why does she love postcards oh i guess that was the only thing they to have. cover her tracks think about it she's like if i'm gonna kill this person i'm gonna tell them to tell everybody in their lives that everything is great so when people are like well what happened to that girl they were like oh no she was living her best life she wanted to go off the grid for a little bit she was doing fine we heard from her she Smart said it was fine bitch. it was in her real handwriting they didn't know what dna was but you know the dna was there so she was convincing these women she's like if you want this shit to happen that's bizarre. Uh, it's smart. I know it's smart as shit, but it's bizarre. How bizarre? How bizarre? I wonder if the postcards were cute. Me too. Let's look them up. I hope there were birds on them. Uh, so she sent out the postcards. Francesca packed up her belongings, and before she left town, she visited Leonardo as she was instructed. And on September 5th, 1940, Leonardo poured a glass of wine and picked up her axe once again. She loves wine. She loves her axe, too. She she repeated her ritual, drained the blood into a basin, chopped up the body into small pieces, then boiled them in her kitchen. She decided to get crafty and charitable with this batch. She used the human remains to make bars of soap 
and more tea cakes. I was wondering when that was coming. Which she, again, shared with the neighbors. Two weeks. Free soap. I love soap. I do. Ever since I was little. I don't know why. I just like soap. I like soap and candles. Soap and candles. They used to make candles from whale lard. I think they made soap from it, too. Yeah, definitely. Yikes. Two weeks later, a woman named Virginia Cachopo came to Leonardo in search for advice. She was looking for a new job when, once again, Leonardo had a really good idea. She Ooh, said, girl, baby girl, listen here. Come closer. Let Leonardo tell you. Oh, no, she's Italian. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just insulted someone. We just lost yes. a subscriber. Thanks for subscribing. I'm sorry. Email us at Podities. 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 At yahoo.org. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> it's been a rough day, okay? The smoke detectors went off while For we were like, trying to do this. Literally 15 minutes in. <laughs> literally. Jason <and> I- <laughs> is up there cursing. Like, literally, I've never heard him curse like this in my entire life. He's cursing every other word as a curse. Jonathan is, I hear. A rapid footsteps back and forth. It was it was a lot. I think I broke it. I like <laughs> threw it on the ground. Oh, My brother funny. came down. He's like, "You guys okay down here?" Right. Jeez. All right. So uh, this woman, Virginia. So Leonardo told Virginia to stay quiet, send out postcards, then visit Leonardo before fleeing town. On September thirtieth, nineteen forty, just twenty five days after her prior murder. Leonardo drugged and murdered her third victim. When will she stop? But wait, there's more. It's so crazy you say that because if, honestly, if this was all me and someone was like, yes, yeah, just like write a postcard and like go somewhere else, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, true. all right. Mm-hmm. And then come see me. I'd be like, okay. Yeah, sure, girl. We'll have some wine. Right. We'll have some of those tea cakes I see you keeping around. They are right. real tasty, exactly. real crispy. I would really fall for it. What's your secret ingredient, Leonardo? It's humans. Humans. Why are you holding a sock? I'm too hot. Oh. Once again, using her axe, Leonardo cracked open the woman's skull like a goddamn eggshell. Drained her blood, chopped up her body, cooked it, and stated in her memoir, get ready for another quote, y'all, quote, she ended up in the pot like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne, and after a long time on the boil, I was able to make the most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbors and acquaintances, and the cakes, too, were better. That woman was really sweet, end quote. Ooh. Also, just letting you guys know when we laugh and we talk, we're not laughing at these victims. Like, we're laughing truly, at each other. Yeah, truly, even though it was a really long time ago, like we're not laughing at this woman who... We're not honestly. We're not laughing at the woman who's doing these crimes, and we're not or laughing the at victims. the victims. We're Just, literally we make faces at each other and we laugh. Is the timing inappropriate? One hundred percent. Yes, that's our fault. Are we going to continue it? One hundred percent. Thanks for listening, guys. Give us a rating on iTunes. Uh, so though it was believed. It was her superstitious sacrifice that kept her son Giuseppe from the war. It was her own actions that landed not only Giuseppe, but Leonardo too in jail. When Virginia's sister-in-law became suspicious, Virginia was the third woman, her sister-in-law became suspicious. Everyone she asked said that Virginia was last spotted talking about or walking to Leonardo's place. So she quickly went to the police and an investigation took place. Once in custody, Leonardo was quick to confess her crimes. Damn, girl. She didn't even, like, try. Mm-mm. In 1946, Leonardo was tried for murder and Giuseppe was questioned as an accomplice. Ooh, see? Her favorite one. The news of the woman making people into tea cakes and soap spread like wildfire and drew a large crowd from all over Italy. Leonardo was not phased by her actions when that was spoken about in court. She even told the judge, I gave the copper ladle, which I used to skim the fat off the kettles to my country, which was so badly in need of metal during the last days of war. She really thought she was charitable. She really thought she was doing something, like doing someone a favor. Like, ma'am, you are taking someone off the planet on your own account. Mm -hmm. Like, no. And then cooking them and eating them. And then serving them to other people. People are showering with this shit. Yeah, with human remains. Oh my god. She It could be someone's friend and they could be in mourning and they're washing themselves washing with it. Themselves with her. Dropping like a bath bomb in it and gross. 
After confessing, Leonardo was found guilty by the jury. No shit. Right. Giuseppe was never charged, but Leonardo was sentenced to 30 years in prison and three That's years it? in a mental institution. Remember when the woman read her palms and said prison and oh, then a mental institution? Uh, well, that shit came to fruition. Yeah? Yeah. Fruition? Fruition. Oh. It's a professional who knows a lot about fruit. Uh, Where do I sign up? Right here. Okay. On the dotted line. Okay. However, she did not make it back into society because she died on October 15th, 1970 at the age of 76. Sayonara, you psycho bitch. (laughs) And many of the tools she used are on display at the Criminological Museum in Rome. Let's go. And that is Leonardo Cinciulli. That is amazing. Thank you. I, yeah, she's uh, something. I don't think something's the word. Imagine being one of the neighbors, like reading this in the newspaper. And being like, and being I, like oh my I God, this was the. I collected all of those. I collected soaps. I collected cookies. She's, they're like nibbling on their little tea cake, reading the Spit paper. It out. <gasps> Can you imagine? That was literally somebody's reality. Like somebody was reading about this and was like, oh, there's that nice woman on the front page. She makes. I wonder what happened. Yeah, she was so nice. She made tea cakes. And then they're reading, skimming, skimming, skimming. And they're like, killed and made tea cakes and gave to neighbors bitch that was me but then what if it was really good and they went in for like seconds they were like you know what i should take this shit before the police takes it as evidence just me that was weird edit that out future john um (laughs) oh man well i wanted to say something go ahead what was it that i wanted to say i forget oh edit that out (laughs) okay um have you been to a fortune teller before? No, I've never been. Never been to the only person that's ever read my cards was you. Oh. Um. And yeah, I've never been to a fortune teller. I've never been to a palm reader. Are they the same thing? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, I've yeah. Never, well, I've never been to either of them because my grandfather is super, super religious, and he's like, that shit is like the devil. But mm. that's not why I never went. Oh, you just said because my. You were just taught that at a young age. Yeah. But that's not why I never went. I just never found a good one. Like, you know, like. There's one in Philly. Her name's. Oh, I shouldn't say it on the radio. We're not on the radio. Fuck it. Madonna. <laughs> um, You know how like you hear stories about people being like, yeah, I went to this one girl and it was so real. Like, like your friend. Did I ever tell you I went to? Yeah. Fortune and this Hill? is what I'm saying. This is like prime example. This <sighs> never happens to me and I never get in contact with the right people and I don't want to go just to anybody because you're I don't think you should like fuck with that shit if it's like not real. I'm yeah. Not well, then you're literally wasting your money too. That too. Like, let's not do that. Cause who has money to waste? Not me. Um. So. Ew. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking and air came out of my throat. So it's prom night. Post prom. Right. So for post prom, you go back to the high school and you stay there till the morning because they're trying not to have kids have sex. Did you have post prom? No. You didn't have no you didn't have prom no i <laughs> i had prom but not post prom i remember one time they did this um lock-in where it was at a bowling lanes and they literally once you went in you weren't allowed to leave yeah. till the morning that's what this was yeah Be- well what they're trying to do is it's like prom night so they're really trying to keep kids in one place and not have them drunk drive and shit so don't drink and drive so that's essentially why they were doing it and why they pretty much do it um they also probably don't want you to make the boom boom Boom, 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 boom. However, in the library, people were definitely penetrated. Yeah, um, definitely probably every corner of the school. <laughs> yeah, it got a little weird and frisky in the library. But anyway, anyway, hey, boys. Um, Any hey, boys. They had fun activities. They had a hypnotist that came out wrong. A hypnotist. They had a hypnotist. I chose to get hypnotized and embarrassed the shit out of myself. What did you do? <laughs> I, I, it like stopped working. So I got off stage. <laughs> Oh. But I was in like the front row. It was really awkward. Someone has a video. Were you like of it. clucking? No, I don't really remember what they had me do, but it was just like a weird time and I didn't, I wasn't about it because I was tired. It was like four in the morning anyway. So I literally fell asleep. Oh, no. Because she's talking in like a calm voice. She's like, oh, you're in the Caribbean. You don't pay taxes. And I was like, damn, bitch, that sounds so good right I'm now. In the dreams. Yeah. Um, so then there was also a fortune teller. So I, wait in line for the fortune teller the line was really fucking long i finally get up there and the weirdest thing i literally get in there 
And the person who was in front of me, I didn't know. So it wasn't like somebody told her I was coming. I go in there and she has under the table. I shit you not. This this shit sounds like it's straight out of a movie. Under the table, she... Oh, hi. That's a mic. <laughs> under the table, she has a briefcase. She takes the briefcase out, opens it up, and there's like one piece of paper in there. And it's a picture of a man with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my God, Leonardo Tijoli. It's coming full circle. Yo, that's crazy. So she shows me the only picture in this goddamn briefcase. And I was like, okay. neat picture of right. Leo. And she goes, Weird. this is, she goes, this is my son. I was like, oh, cool. And she's like, this is my son. He works with Leonardo DiCaprio. And I was like, that's really neat. She goes, he went to film school. Are you going to film school? I was like, oh. How did you know? I'm going to be like, that's what I want to go to college for. And she like went, I was in there for like longer than the allotted time. And after (laughs) she had to like go get a glass of water because I made her thirsty on some real shit. It was like the weirdest conversation because it did not sound like, you know how they can say vague things. Mm -hmm. They're just like, oh, you know, somebody who has a birthday coming up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, everyone probably knows someone. Literally. Yeah. But she had some like. The se- she didn't say hi, didn't introduce herself. This bitch pulled up a... She wasn't Sick a bitch. Case. This woman pulled out a little Sick briefcase. Case. It was not a suitcase. Imagine if she pulled out a suitcase. She's oh, like, get in, bitch. We're oh, escaping. Yeah, that's true. They are totally different. They are very different. Um, yeah, and she knew a lot about she me that made me uncomfortable. read the fuck out of you. Also, I had my cards read, and there's no secrets. You can choose to believe it or not i encourage everybody to go find the right person who has uh, who's reputable because there are scammers out there but not everybody is are this you woman, reputable me yeah uh no oh. <laughs> um but to make an appointment email uh potties jodcast at <laughs> yahoo.net um i hate us today <laughs> i hate us all the time it's a 24-hour job to do hating us Someone's self-loathing do it. it's Bye. draining it's draining um how dare those who's invite me down there last minute sorry did you just quote the grinch yes it's like i was saying i had my cards read by a woman and she didn't read tarot she didn't read a tarot deck she read a 52 deck of cards oh actual and cards. knew way too much stuff that i kept secret from a lot of people who is it uh it's my mom's friend oh i need to go to her mm-hmm. like i went to her once that. and i recorded it my mom did my mom actually went and she recorded yeah, it recently. She goes a lot. But the first time she had ever gone, she, this woman said something about a big change and she got really into, I'm not going to get into details, but she got into details and my mom was like, no, that doesn't sound right. Like, and then that month came around, it, I think it was in May or maybe a little bit before May and to a T everything this woman said was, was correct. Came full circle all the way around. Yeah. You see, connect the dots. Here we go. Boop, boop, boop. I just connected the dots. Are you shook? What am I talking about? Hi. I want to. I want to go to your mom's friend. Hi, Perfect. Future John. Edit that out. Okay. He will. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> Let's jump into my spooky stories of three different types of cannibals. Oh yeah, we should tell you guys. If it's not too late by now, you probably should not be eating. Yeah. Oh, sorry. If you're eating, rewind stop eating and then re-listen to it if you're smoking stop smoking cigarettes sure okay neat um i titled this the real life monster wow thanks it took a long time to come up with (laughs) she's pretending she's sarcastic but 100 percent is not nope (laughs) um so this is the story of the real life monster My murder rampage started out as revenge, but ended up as a passion for taste of blood and the overwhelming sense of power that one gets from taking the life of another. This was a direct quote for Joe from Joe Metheny. Well, with a last name and the first four letters are meth. You, you gotta be weird. You're set up for it. Joe Metheny, a truck driver residing in South Baltimore, Maryland at the time, claimed to be on a murderous rampage in the summer of 1994. Metheny states in his own words, with his crack-addicted old lady and their 16-year-old son. That's what he said. Oh. Stand-up guy. (laughs) 
One night, Metheny returned home to an empty house. His wife had run away with his child, which some believe started his thirst for blood and revenge. She ran away with the kid? The kid, so he was pissed. And, and he's like, I gotta kill somebody. I gotta kill somebody. Like, I I'm have ready. to. I simply must. Yeah. Six months later, Metheny found out his son had been taken away due to neglect. His ex-wife had fallen on hard times and was staying with a man under a bridge. What? Yep. With the kid? Well, not anymore because the authorities took him away. Oh, no. Yeah. Do we know how old the kid was at the time or no? Um. Well, it, it said he was 16 and this was six months later. So he must have still been 16 or maybe 17. Oh, okay. Um. But he wasn't like a child. Mm-mm. But still, that's still yeah, really but still. tough. Especially you're with your mom that whole time. Now you're 17 year old, years old and now you're... Living on your under own. a bridge. Living under under a bridge. Um, I mean, it also says she was a crack addict. So, mm. um, They were not there, but the two homeless motherfuckers that got them high were down there. They were passed out on some old stinking mattress, and that's where they were when I left. Except they were dead from being chopped up. Direct quote from Metheny. What does that mean? This story gets bizarre. Like, I have a lot of direct quotes from this man and the things he says. Ew. Yeah. Methany- so, wait, hold on. What does that even mean, though? So, he's basically saying that um, the, the ex-wife and the man that she was staying with under the bridge weren't there. But um, these other two po- these other two people were and he killed them. Oh, because that it was convenient, I guess. And he was just pissed. He was pissed. He's, he's stating that... Um, I guess this was when police asked him what had happened. Right. He's saying that they were there the whole time because he killed them and they basically couldn't go anywhere. No. I'm saying. Metheny has drugged, beat, and raped several women. Monsters don't only exist in your dreams. They exist in real life. Mm-hmm. Cause that Seeing more is... every day. Yeah. Seriously. Here's an idea, guys. Be nice. And don't, don't fucking rape people. And no means no. Thanks. I killed seven people, three men and four women. Two men I chopped up with an axe under a bridge in South Baltimore. That those were the two guys. Um, I was found not guilty for them because they couldn't prove it. They couldn't prove I did it. Under that same bridge, I also killed two women and one man who was fishing, who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong no. time. I waded their bodies down and put them in that river. I showed the police where I put them about three years later, but they couldn't find them, so I didn't get charged for it. That was a direct quote from Metheny. Oh. This man is cocky. Yeah, I see that. In 1995, victims such as Kathy Ann, Magaziner, and Kimberly Spicer were lured into his trailer where they both were stabbed and strangled. No. Right. Now known as the cannibal killer, Metheny claimed to dismember his victims and serve their flesh at a beef stand he owned. People paid to eat other people. I'm going to vomit. Yeah. Like real life. Like just imagine that. You have no idea. That's what I'm saying. You don't know what you're eating ever. Ew, he had a beef stand. A beef stand. Oh my God. Imagine going out with a guy. It's like, so what do you do? I own a beef stand. You need to, everyone, please just take a minute pause this episode and go look up pictures of joseph metheny just do it have fun have a ball he was about 400 pounds the type of man and he was balding oh god i cut the meat up and put it in some tupperware bowls and then put it in in the freezer i opened a little open pit beef stand i had real roast beef and pork sandwiches they were very good the human body tastes very much like pork. If you uh, mix it together, no one can tell the difference. Uh, I wonder what I taste like. Do you think it tastes good? Yeah. You're a veg- vegetarian. I wonder what I taste like. I think like. that counts. Yeah. I probably don't have as much flavor. But I have a gray personality. Sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, you do. I hate you. <laughs> In December 1996, Metheny was running low on human meat, so he brought Rita Kemper into his trailer. Metheny immediately began to beat Kemper. Metheny turned his back and she managed to flee out the door. She managed to run and call the police. At that point, Metheny surrendered officially. Even after confessing to a number of murderers, Metheny was only charged with a total of three. Lack of evidence caused this terrible act. Kimberly Spicer's remains were found buried 10 feet away from Metheny's trailer. He was then charged with the murder of Spicer, Kathy, and Tony and Graysaw. 
Joe Metheny was sentenced to death. Oh my. This man is canceled. Just wait. This ruling was turned over in 2000 and brought down what? to life without parole. When the jury handed down the news, Metheny said, and I quote, I dug up the skull of Kathy and then washed out the maggots and made love to it. The words I'm sorry will never come out for they would for they would be a lie. August 8th of this year, Joe Metheny was found unresponsive by prison guard in Maryland. Oh, my God. That was a couple months ago. Yeah, he died. Oh, my God. No. This man is canceled. I hope you're ready for the next one. This is even more crazier. So this is the end of this story? Yeah. That's messed up but i have to wonder i could be wrong but i have to wonder if he lied about the other bodies he got away with because it oh, okay. sounded well i i don't know he like to- he's cocky as shit so yeah but it's sounding like he was trying to get his body count up since he was already like screwed with the system do you know what i mean because right. i feel like it's he's i don't mental. know he said that he yeah that's true he said that he killed all those people down by the river though oh i'm 100 i'm like not saying he didn't but i'm just saying think about it if you're either if you are sentenced to death or you have like life in prison and you want your reputation up there oh, if you've already killed like, enough people right. it's like it's oh like, well okay, i well, didn't tell you about the lose? other yeah like mm-hmm. let me tell you about these bodies the people that i that's didn't true. actually I didn't kill think about it like that i don't know i think a weird ways i could be wrong but i'm just thinking I wouldn't put it past somebody who sounds like that cocky about right. shit. Yeah. To it's actually like he has to be the best. Be, even at killing people. Yeah, like, being like lying about it. Wait. You know what he wasn't the best at? Getting to the gym. Right. Literally. I, you need to see pictures of this man. What do you think he smelled like? Beef. I oh. smell like beef. He probably smelled like beef and like hot, hot like, like cheese. Yeah. Like honestly, I feel like he just didn't never showered. Oh. I feel like I need to shower. Yeah. After, like, talking about him. Oh, God. All right. I'm All mentally right. preparing myself for the next one. Do you have two? Yeah, I have three. Oh, God. So there's another one after this. Okay. This is called The Cannibal Couple. Oh, So cute. Natalia Bakshiva and husband Dimitri Bakshiva are being detained for allegedly making pies of human meat and selling them to local restaurants. Natalia, a formal nurse, initially sold the pies to boost income. She was quoted saying, I bake pies. When asked what she filled them with... (laughs) I have a mouthful of wine, oh my god. I make pies. I I bake pies. Stop. I bake pies. What are you going to do about it, officer? When asked what she filled them with, she replied, whatever is around. Oh, God. Natalia was fired as a nurse because of her drinking habit, according to reports. In 2010, Natalia sold meat to a cafe owner by the name of Vitaly Yakubenko. She was very active, asked lots of questions, but mainly about where we buy our meat and fish and how fresh it is. She made clear she could supply meat. I said that we would work only with certified suppliers, said Yakubenko. The owner added... The police should look now where this woman may have worked as a chef and if she tried to push her products there too. For sure, these cannibals were looking for places to sell their meat. It sounded to me like her main motive when she was looking for a job. Natalia told me she had experience working as a chef. The owner refused to work with her, saying she looked vulgar. Did she look vulgar? I didn't. I don't know what she looks like. Um, so there's like two pictures like circling the web there's like one where she looks like normal and then another where she looks like kind of cracked out Mm -hmm. so it's probably the cracked out one since she's an alcoholic what's her name i want to look her up natalia natalia bakshiva her Uh husband dimitri looks yeah (laughs) ah Uh uh-huh oh no yeah the one where they're kissing no she was 42 and he was 35 whoa i'll get into how they met in a second okay it is said that dimitri bakshiva's natural parents were drug addicts and he was adopted by a man by the name of vladimir vladimir adopted from an orphanage in russia as dimitri grew up he was jailed several times for robbery and theft his adoptive parents knew natalia was a bad influence on him it it was claimed that Natalia Bakshiva had taken Dimitri in as a teenager and married him when he was 18. Yeah. Oh, how kind of her. 
It is said the earliest date of their culinary experiment is December 28, 1999. Natalia claims to have eaten about 30 victims. Whoa, the 30? Couple, yes. Where did she get them from? Anywhere. Oh, no. The couple used dating sites to lure victims. The pair used ether and a Russian drug called Corvalvo to make their victims sleep, and then they and then they would kill them. Seven bags of cut-up human remains were found in the couple's refrigerator and freezer in their home at a hostel in a military academy in Krasnodar, southern Russia. It better just be southern. southern. <laughs> That's that southern hospitality, southern. baby. Some 19 remains of human skin were also discovered, which had been removed from dead people. At least one jar with pickled human remains and 19 slices of human skin were also discovered in the hostel. Police questioned how the couple were even allowed to live for years in a military academy ran by the Russian Defense Ministry. A psychologist was sent from Novgorod to make Natalia talk. Reports say Natalia was checked by a psychi- psychiatric hospital and found to be mentally healthy. Uh, I don't know if that's scarier. Yeah. That is scarier. Yeah. Ah. Really. And that's ah. um, when you were... When you were talking about yours, that's what I was thinking about. I was like, I don't even, there could be nothing wrong with this woman. Yeah. It could literally just be this is what she likes to do. Mm-hmm. Just a hobby. In their home, many mobile phones of their victims were found and video lessons on how to cook meals from human meat, says the police source. This woman had been working in the military academy as a nurse and supposedly she was sharing these cans of steamed human meat with student pilots. Dimitri's phone had pictures in it of selfies he took with women's body parts. Oh, dear God. Also, pictures were found with a hand in his mouth and a finger from the hand in his nose. So he's got a sense of humor. I can appreciate that. I'm kidding. (laughs) Asshole. (laughs) I uh, put up the horns in case anyone wants to know. She put up the horns. Illuminati confirmed. (laughs) We are Illuminati. Remember we took the quiz? Yeah, it's true. A search was conducted by the police, and they found body parts in a garbage container near the couple's hostel. Another discovery was a woman's head with red hair in a metal bucket. The woman was identified as Elena B., who lived in the same military academy where the alleged cannibal couple resided. It is believed she was killed in a forest nearby, and her dismembered remains were carried home by Dimitri in a backpack. It is said the couple's house was filled with pictures of them with various body parts of their victims. It is not certain where the couple's trial lies as of right now, but let's hope it's somewhere dark and cold. Ugh. I wonder what their house smelled like. What that hostel smelled like? There's a video of their house. Mm. There's a video of what their house looked like on the inside. Is it creepy? Yeah. Really? I was watching it at work. Oh, no. At least it wasn't like in bed alone at night. That's true, because that's where I usually do my research. Yeah, literally, though. It the, I couldn't find any other, like, information about the trial after that. Oh, they got their shit shut down. The police got involved. Right. You would think. Right. Yikes. Also, it's, it is Russia. I don't know how it works over there. I don't know. It could be different. Could be. I'm hungry. Me too. Feed me another story, baby. Oh, okay. So, this is just a little cute short story <laughs> that I wanted to share with you guys. In um, 2012, I'm going to call him MS because I don't know how to say his name. It's uh, Mo Sugama. Okay. So, um, in 2012, MS was an asexual... Why don't you just call him Mo instead of multiple sclerosis? Okay. You just like call him it. Mo. In 2012, a man by the name of Mo... Um, had its genitals removed and seasoned them before cooking and serving them to five paying dinner guests. Um, he was asexual and he was having a surgery. So um, his frozen penis and scrotum was taken home from the hospital and organized for people to eat at a party. He charged guests about $250 per person to eat genitalia in Tokyo, Japan. It was garnished with parsley and mushrooms. Guests sat and listened to a piano recital, and took part in a panel discussion. The event was in in the Suganami ward in Tokyo. While five people dove into Mo's genitalia, the rest of them ate beef or crocodile. The people who ate his genitalia... <laughs> oh my god, you should have saw Jonathan's face. 
<laughs> I'm just like, hi, do you have tonight's special? Oh, yes, we have crocodile. We've got a great beef sirloin and uh, male genitalia for $200. You'll love it. There's a garnish on it and mushrooms. You're only guaranteed half an inch. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, my God. How do they How do they serve that? Uh, With a smile on their damn face because they're rich. Uh- well, he must have had a long schlong because it had to feed five people. Well, it got cooked. So think about what happens when you cook a hot dog. It like shrivels down. Also, really quick side note. One time I was in middle school, I was cooking a hot dog Ew. on a frying pan. Uh. And I heard this noise and it was like, Psss, and he kept getting closer. And then I heard a really loud bang. I fucking hit the deck. I started what screaming. It? it was just a little nail on the handle. No, it was a little nail on the handle. <laughs> it was a little um, a little screw that was on the handle that shot off, and I thought somebody was shooting me. <laughs> I hit the uh, you deck. You the best story. Oh my god! Sorry. Back to um, back to your penis. So the people who ate the genitalia were um, a thirty year old couple, a twenty two year old woman, a thirty two year old man, and a um, an event planner. Oh. And she was 29. Okay. Yeah. So, and that is the story of people eating genitalia in Tokyo and paying $250 for it. So, um, sever your body parts and sell them. That's my advice. I'm just thinking about a penis being cut off and it makes me cringe. Oh my God. It's like, um, in holidays, that's what they made him do. Yeah. Mmm. Yummy. Yikes. I hope you guys are hungry. Do a fun fact. Before I get to the fun fact, speaking of all this fun stuff, do you remember back in the early 2000s, the whole Wendy's chili thing where the woman found a finger in her Wendy's chili? Oh my God, yes. You remember that? I still eat it. You'd still eat it? I still eat it. Oh my God, stop. I'm just do kidding. You... I'm nasty. I would never eat Wendy's chili. I can't. Um, do you remember what happened with it? The outcome? Well, here, she ended up getting arrested. Yeah, I didn't know. I had to look it up. But all this all this stuff made me like want to go <laughs> look at body parts yes, and food because, you know, it. just the girly things. Um, so she ended up getting arrested, her and her husband, because what happened was her husband's friend lost a finger. He lost part of his ring finger in an accident at work and they couldn't sew it back on. So he took the finger. She cooked it at her house on the stove. Oh, okay, well, then she deserves to go to jail. And then she brought the finger to, to Wendy's. Eat. Yeah, it was a whole fraud thing. And they ended up being like millions of dollars out of money from because people around the world thought that they there were fingers in it. You know, I remember people like stopped going to Wendy's because they were like, a woman finds a finger in her chili and everybody believed it for years. Do you remember? Um, you probably don't remember this. So there was like a rumor going around that. Um, that you're a lesbian. I do remember that freshman year of college. We all know that. One, two. Can we can we have some real news? <laughs> anyway, right. um, there sorry, was... you're Lebanese, lesbian. Like it's really confusing to some <laughs> people. I'm also a lesbian. Um, there's there was allegedly a rumor going around that um all the missing children were going into the McDonald's meat. What missing children? Like just any missing child. It said that. You know, the Illuminati, they love to eat children. Oh, come on, that's like, that's an old wives' tale. Is it wives? Wise? It's an old wise tale. Wise, like smart? I think so. Why would that, I, why that would be smart, I don't know. Or is it like an old woman telling her tale? An old woman, what? Wives? I'm going to look it up. Oh. Oh my God, that's another one. Of that's another one. Mitched match. don't know what they say. Right off the back. Is it either or? Or do you just not know how to look anything up? Eat my butt. Okay. Okay, wait. Here it is. The grammarist. Old wives tale oh, versus old wise. wise tale. I remember I got into a fight with my friend because I was like, we'll just play it by ear. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. No, I think I, said, I think I said year. Oh, uh, we'll play it by year. I'll let you know in tw- 20, 12, 12 2015. Months. <laughs> Um, I think it's wives tale the popular why though I guess because wives were wise no it's not wise tale it's old wives I know tale. I'm saying I guess it's because wives were wise like Wait, it they says were smart an old wise tale is an egg corn <laughs> a mishearing of a phrase 
egg corn. <laughs> What's I an egg corn? I almost fell out of my chair. You corn. Wait, now I have to look up egg corn. Okay, so it's a word or a phrase that results in mishearing or misinterpretation of another. We're definitely losing followers Wait. and listeners for this. So episode. egg corn, so like Mitch Match, all that shit we've been talking about, it has a name and it's egg corn, and I couldn't be more excited about it. It's egg corn. Egg corn. E G G C O R N. Oh. You can my take God. that shit to the bank, Merriam Webster. Um, with that being said, I do have a fun fact, and that is the fact Tell that me. a shrimp's heart is in its head. Um, I had one and I have to find it. An eagle can kill a young deer and fly away with it. Yo. That's, a, that's, a, that's honestly serious. <laughs> like, J- imagine that. Jason's sister, she has a dog. It's a, um Italian greyhound. Named William. Yeah, and, like, there are birds that sit on the roof that are big enough Plotting. to swoop him up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See? No. So she can't, like, let him out on his own accord. But, I mean, I'm sure she can. But... I'm sorry, Willie. Yeah, can you see him, like, flying away? <laughs> like, oh, my God, not to get emotional about it, but I think that's what happened to my cat. Aww. I have so many by, like, by my I parents' know. house. Literally so many yeah. shit that could have happened. Okay, now I'm sad I have to go listen to Fleetwood Mac. I love Fleetwood Mac. I can't listen to Storms. Fleetwood Mac. The song is Storms. It reminds me of my cat that ran away and I'm drinking wine and I really am not in a, I'm in a very vulnerable position right now to be Don't talking worry, about guys. this subject. I got this. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So before we go, I actually found a list. Are you ready? Of a hundred egg corns. I'm so excited to make fun of people. Okay. So this one says biting my tongue is supposed to be biting my tongue. What? Like B I D I N G. B I D I N G. Yeah. Best thing since life's breath. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! I imagine a um, life vest <laughs> on a slice of bread. <laughs> it's the best thing since life's bread. Oh my god! Buck naked is actually okay, butt like, naked. Who says buck naked? Chicken spots instead of chicken. Pie. Oh god! I got the chicken spots. <laughs> Um, what the hell? Curly roads instead of curvy roads? This is canceled. Yes. No, this is fake news. (laughs) This is from NPR. For those of you, NPR.org. You know it's real when it's an organization. This one says diarrhea instead of (laughs) diarrhea. (laughs) I got the diarrhea. (laughs) Crazy part is I swear I've heard this all before. Like, it doesn't seem that far off. Duct tape, which is the brand, versus duct tape, which I literally just learned. That was a punchline on duct tape. Oh, espresso. I hate when people say espresso. It's I, espresso, you I dumb bitch. Espresso. <laughs> it's espresso, you dumb bitch. I def say espresso. What is it? Espresso. Espresso. Ew, no. Wait, who says this? Extreme court instead of Supreme Court. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go to the extreme sport court, oh. like a Supreme Court. <laughs> I know, but you oh dumb God. bitch. Shut up. Who said eye bulbs instead of eyeballs? I, my eye bulbs hurt. <laughs> Who did this? Extreme port. <laughs> and, fr- <laughs> and right off the back. Right off the back. Hell in a handbag. Is actually hell in a handbasket. Oh, I think I knew that. But handbag sounded good too. Iced tea instead of iced tea. Oh my God. I had a debate with someone. So it, it's iced tea right now. According. Iced okay. So this is NPR saying that this is coming from Miriam Webster. So whoever she is. <laughs> Get it together. Miriam. Um, Miriam. Jig solve puzzles. Who? Jig solve. Jig fucking solve what (laughs) um a laptop instead of a laptop i've heard so many people when i was like in 10th grade literally legit this girl put on her status i need to get a new lab top (laughs) like so when you went when you went ahead and searched for your new laptop and you searched laptops, what exactly came up? Stop this one. Nip it in the butt. Yes. Yes. Nip it in the butt. Nip it in the bud. Which I don't understand that. What's the context? Nip it in the bud? Yeah. 
Oh, I guess like a flower. You were the one who explained it to stopped me. Stopped growing? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. I thought you had another insight. And that's a negative. I thought it was nipping in the buds. Oh, it, mm, I remember that. I don't even know why we're still friends. <laughs> pass mustard instead of pass muster. I don't, I've never heard of I that. I don't get that one. Pre-Madonna instead of prima Donna. <laughs> prima Donna girl. <laughs> Copyright infringement. Chicken Spox. <laughs> Self of steam. <laughs> <laughs> I picture someone literally like steaming. Valentine's Day. Yep. That's mm-hmm. you. You would say that. It's Valentine's Day. Wet your appetite instead of wet your appetite. W-H-E-T. Don't know what that means. I'm meaning there. Wheelbarrow instead of wheelbarrow. I like wheelbarrow better. It's not wheelbarrow. No, it's barrow. Are you shook? I, that's what I felt when I found out that it wasn't nip it in the butt. Why would you nip it in the butt? Why would you wheelbarrow? We're because it's like a barrel. A barrel is a thing. What's so a, bar- a butt? What's a barrow? I don't know. Google it. Fuck Google. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last interesting one I have. There were a hundred, and uh, that was the only interesting one. None of them were mismatched. Yeah, I guess that's uh, one of a kind. That girl really did a good job. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, If you could give us a review on iTunes, we appreciate all the new ones. Shout out to everybody. Bad after this. Hey. uh, And thank you for the Facebook uh, reviews as well. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Readings, reviews, everything. They're the same thing. So, yeah, follow us on Instagram uh, at Esoteric Oddities. You can follow us on Twitter at Esoteric Oddity, O-D-D-I-T-I-E. You can send us an email at odditiespodcast at gmail.com, uh, formerly known at yahoo.org. Did I hit all the bases? Facebook, come follow us on Facebook. We yes. have some thrilling shit. You'll be thrilled. Thrilled. You'll be chilled. On ice. Oh, oh, like the body parts in these stories. Yes. Thank you guys again for Thank listening. Thank you for listening. Have a great night, guys. Thanks. Don't let the bag bugs bite or the bag cannibals. Bugs? Bag bag bugs? bugs? Is that an egg corn? Don't let the bag... Don't let the bed bugs bite or the cannibals. I'm going to leave all that in. I hate you. Bye. <laughs>